take is critical mass. <coughs> and, and there are different ways to think of critical mass. At a practice level, if only 10% of your revenue is related to incentive, well, it's hard to change your practice just for that. But if 60% of your revenue is somehow tied to value, that critical mass encourages you to change. You can think of it in a community. How many payers are paying on some value-based arrangement? Can you get critical mass at a community level? The CPCI initiative in Southwest Ohio is trying to do that. If we can get all the payers to focus on this one region for enhanced primary care, will it make a difference? And then for the state, we want to see those things spread as widely as possible statewide. The key to critical mass is no one payer has enough. So if Medicaid does it, we have more now because we've extended Medicaid, but we don't have enough critical mass to really encourage folks through financial incentive to change their practice. But if Medicaid and Medicare are together, well now that's a really big block, and we have those two or three really large payers, suddenly you, it, you're there. So I think Medicare is increasingly wanting wanting to encourage a critical mass beyond just their purchasing power. And the grant we got to design the new models, we're encouraging states to bring people to, ta to the table to do exactly that. So now what we have to constantly do is kind of adjust where we are. So for example, if Medicare has a preference for an episode they want to see bundled, well that's going to be influential in our process because we want to pick something that they'll do too so we can boost our critical mass. Um, the difficulty is it's very hard to get Medicare at the table. And because Medicare is at the table in Southwest Ohio, that's why we picked that, um, we're hoping that if we win the next federal testing grant on episodes, that'll bring Medicare to the table with us, and then we won't have to guess at their intentions, but we'll be sitting at the table with them to try to, to, try to design. Last question. Whoever has one more question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With your benefits, Ohio, uh, a lot of us work with older adults. Will we be able to enroll older adults at that site as well? And would it simplify the uh, the whole process if we got rid of the eligibility categories? If we had no categories, that would be some work. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. Okay. I know what you mean. I don't mean to. Uh, I know exactly what you mean, and yes. Um, so, in the middle tier here, um, you can see to get from over here to over there, we're moving some Medicaid in January 2014. Um, kids. <laughs> and parents will be on the new system in January 2014. All of Medicaid will be on the new system by November, <coughs> including seniors and people with disabilities. Now, what will happen is the income test will occur first, and for some people, think about how different this is. You may, by virtue of income alone, become eligible for Medicaid without even having to do a disability determination. And then, once you're eligible, all you have to do is the level of care determination. Think how different that is. But if by income alone you're not eligible, and it requires an additional process to check spend down, assets, those things will still apply for seniors and people with disabilities. At that point, it doesn't look that much different. Your application starts on the system, but then you have to go to the county office to complete the application, which will be done in the system, so you won't have to redo that, but you still have to do the in-person part of the disability determination. So we're asking our most vulnerable populations to still come outside of their home to go wait at an office for long periods of time to make Is that clear? Because the federal government requires an actual disability determination. If the, if the test is income alone, you can come in through the online system, including people today with disabilities who would have to do that. But if by income alone they're eligible, they're in. And that'll be a lot of people. But 
if that doesn't get you all the way there and you, you have a higher income, but you need credit to spend that down or an asset test to bring that down, you have to go and do your paperwork. And it's not our choice, it's the federal law. But for most people, so this is a pleasure for me. Um, uh, I always enjoy coming up here. Um, I do have to say around the state on extending Medicaid coverage, uh, the activity up here was tremendous. Every time we asked for something, every time we asked for a forum or an event or could you come to this or could you make these calls, um, Northwest Ohio, as, as much or more than any other part of the state, really. Did I say Northwest? <laughs> <laughs> I must be going to for medical later. Oh, I apologize. But, but this area, Cleveland, uh, was fantastic. And uh, including an event here at the clinic just days before the controlling board um, vote. Uh, when the governor had to pick one place to go, he picked, he picked here. So, Thank you for that. I'm very glad for Ohio that we got that done. And thanks for your time. Well, thank you very much to Greg for coming uh, this morning. We are going to take just a brief recess while we reset um, for our panel discussion in the second half of the